Welcome back everybody and thanks for tuning in again. Today we're going to talk about image stacking on astrophotography to get better looking photos. In the previous videos we talked about how to take single exposures and tracking stars with a stars tracker. Today we're going to talk about stacking photos and how we can take the other frames that we need to stack the photos. So first we have the light frames. The light frames are the images that contain the real information. So basically the images that we took of the stars in the sky. Next we have are the flat frames. Flat frames are used to correct the vignetting of your image. Basically the vignetting is the darkening in the upper and lower corners. So to make a good flat frame it is very important not to change the focus of your camera. Now there's lots of different ways to take a flat frame, but I prefer using a piece of an old white t-shirt with a rubber band placed over the end of the lens and then smooth out all the wrinkles. Now you remember that old cell phone app that was called a flashlight before we could actually turn the flash on the cameras? Well, get that puppy out again and turn on that white screen and place your cell phone or your tablet on top of your lens and snap a few pictures in AV mode because we want the camera to decide the exposure time. Now we have to do this at the same ISO speed as the light frames. So once you have your, that all set up, take anywhere from 5 to 20 photos. I use 5, that usually seems to be enough. And we'll use these in the Deep Sky Stacker to create a master flat frame. After you take your flat frames, note the exposure time for the shutter speed. We're going to need to know that later. We all know that with the higher ISO levels we use for nighttime photography, we tend to get more signal noise in our photos. So the next three types of frames we are going to use will help increase our signal to noise ratio to lower that noise level in our photos. Okay, so our next frame sets are going to be dark frames. Dark frames are used to remove the dark signal from the light frames. Dark frames are basically a black photo that just contained the noise from the camera and the lens. So to make a dark frame, basically we put the lens cap on and take a bunch of photos. Dark frames must be made at the same exposure time, temperature, and ISO setting as the light frames. These are very specific to the shooting conditions as temperature, ISO level, and shutter speed will change the amount of noise developed in the exposure. So install your lens cap and snap off 5 to 20 photos at the same settings that you took when you're shooting the stars. Next up we have bias frames. Bias frames are used to remove the signal from the light frames as well. The signal though is directly related to the sensor in the camera alone. So basically what we're going to do is put our lens cap on and take 5 to 20 shots of the shortest possible exposure we can. Most cameras it's either one two thousandth or one four thousandth or one eight thousandth of a second. Again, make sure that you're taking those at the same ISO speed as before. It's just good practice to take all these photos at the end of your shooting session or sometime in the middle when you have to change batteries or memory cards. Alright, so remember before I said we're going to have to remember our shutter speed for our flat frames? Well, here's why. We need to take dark flat frames. Just like dark frames remove the noise from the light frames, the dark flat remove the noise from the flat frames. So now we're just going to put our lens cap on, keep our ISO speed the same as usual, and take 5 to 20 photos at the same shutter speed as we did our flat frames. And then we have our dark flat frames made. Now that all our frames are made, we can import these all with our light frames into the program Deep Sky Stacker. We're going to select Open Picture Files. This is where we are going to import all our light frames. We're just going to select all and hit open. Here we have all our dark frames. We'll just select all and import once again. We will continue the process with the flat files, the dark flat files, and the offset frames. Once all our pictures are imported, we will select the Check All button. 
After that, we will go to Register Checked Pictures. We will register all. On the Advanced menu, we can adjust the star detection threshold. We want to be able to capture around 150 stars. Once that has completed, we will go to Recommended Settings and we will check to see if everything's green and ready to go. Under here, it will show you all your options for stacking the photos. After you've confirmed everything is selected as you'd like, click OK. Next we will click the OK button. We'll confirm everything is set properly and we have enough disk, disk space to stack all the files necessary. We'll click OK and let the computer run and do its thing. This can take some time depending on your processor speed. So if you've been following along, please take some time and hit that like button and subscribe and ring the bell too while you're at it. It really does make a difference. So once your picture has been loaded, you can go ahead and save it. And then we can exit out of Deep Sky Stacker and you can bring it into your favorite editing program and edit the picture to your liking. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you liked, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.